Do you ever think back to games you used to play as a kid and think to yourself, man, I was way too young for that game? Well, join the club. Welcome everybody to Training 10. And today we're going to be counting down 10 games you're probably too young to be playing. These were the games that contain mature content and were clearly aimed at older gamers, but somehow still managed to pull a younger player base due to marketing accessibility or just coincidence. Number 10, we got House of the Dead. Kicking off our list is this arcade classic that was released in Japan in 1996 and internationally in 1997. The game featured an interesting plot as you controlled two special agents as they tried to put a stop to Dr. Kurian, a mad scientist creating inhuman, bloodthirsty creatures. House of the Dead was a ton of fun and actually featured a couple different endings, which was pretty innovative for an arcade game, but featured pretty graphic violence considering that it was a game all about killing zombies. Not to mention that this was an arcade machine so anyone could just walk up to it and witness the brutality. Number eight, we have Gauntlet Legends. Released in the arcades in 1998 and ported to consoles the following year, Gauntlet Legends was a fantasy themed hack and slash dungeon crawl game and a sequel to the original Gauntlet games from the mid 80s. This game was pretty innovative for an arcade game as it was one of the first to include passwords that the player could remember and enter in order to actually save their progress as if it was a console game, which also added the ability to level up characters and earn XP. Looking back at it today, Gauntlet Legends was really ahead of its time, but definitely wasn't supposed to be played by the people who were playing it in the arcades. The Gauntlet Legends featured some pretty scary sequences and graphic violence, as in the original arcade version of the game, enemies would explode into bloody heaps upon death, which, you know, is pretty graphic, but the graphicness was toned down in certain console ports. But regardless of that, it definitely deserved the number eight spot. Number seven, we have Conqueror's Bad for a Day. I feel sorry for the parents who accidentally put this game into their kids' hands. Conqueror's Bad Fur Day was developed by Rare and released as an exclusive for the Nintendo 64, which was in fact a pretty family-friendly console. It also didn't help that this game featured a very light-hearted visual style as it was a parody of various platform games at the time, including Rare's own Banjo-Kazooie series. But instead of featuring very light-hearted writing and jokes, Conqueror's Bad Fur Day was extremely inappropriate, featuring graphic violence, constant profanity, tons of sex, and drug jokes and an opening sequence based around drunkenness. Conqueror's Bad for a Day is one of the best N64 games ever released, but due to the console, it was released on the cartoonish visual style and the unsuspecting parents who bought it for their kids, it definitely earns a spot on this list. Number six, we have Area 51. This rail shooter had a simple plot involving aliens taking over the Area 51 facility and forcing you to fend them off with various weaponry and explosives. The game got a lot of attention for its addicting gameplay, but also its graphic violence as this game looked really good for its time and featured some pretty gory kills. This was right around the time that Mortal Kombat was dominating the arcades and other companies were trying to get in on the controversial graphic violence craze. And while Area 51 is definitely a classic, chances are you were a little too young to be playing it at the time that you did. Now at the number five spot, we kind of all expected this game to be on this list, and it's pretty much a given for that reason. And it's gotten to the point that Call of Duty isn't even seen as an adult game anymore, and is rather referred to as a squeaker's paradise. How are so many kids getting their hands on Call of Duty? And why are so many kids getting their hands on Call of Duty? Now there's always going to be kids playing online games that are mature, but Call of Duty is notorious for these squeakers almost making up most of the player base. Number four, we have Time Crisis, another violent arcade classic. The Time Crisis series started back in 1995 and has had plenty of sequels since then, some much better than others, with the standouts being Time Crisis 2 and 3, in our opinion. Time Crisis was a unique light gun shooter as the player had direct control over the character during gameplay, as opposed to them just being on the rails and there was a pedal that the player could press their foot on to jump in and out of cover. While Time Crisis isn't bloody or graphic by any means, it's still very violent, especially as the series went on and the graphics got better and better. Due to the game not having any blood, this led to many parents being okay with their kids playing it, as opposed to other bloodier shooters. But come on, this game definitely isn't for kids. Number three, we have Halo. Now, much like Call of Duty, Halo has become known over the years for the insane amount of squeakers present online. It seems that no matter how far you go back in Halo's history, you'll find people who are way too young to be playing it. Perhaps it was the sci-fi setting that convinced parents that it would be okay for kids to play online, or maybe it was the colorful visual art style. But whatever reason, apparently a lot of young players got their hands on the original Halo games, and we're still not sure how or why that happened. Number two, we have Grand Theft Auto. Now, whenever you have a super popular game, kids are gonna play it regardless. That's just how things work. And no game is more guilty of this than the GTA series. 
GTA has never been a kid-friendly game unless you want to go all the way back to the top-down games and even then they weren't very appropriate. But despite all of the violence, sex, drugs, profanity, and crime that GTA is known for, you will always find young kids in GTA Online and you'll always find older gamers telling stories about how they used to play San Andreas and Vice City when they were younger. This one probably has to do with the fact that GTA is such a popular series that everyone has played. And even if you personally didn't own the game as a kid, you probably had that one cool friend with the cool parents who let you come over and play it without them telling your parents. Now at the number one spot, we have Mortal Kombat. Of course, this game is gonna get number one. Kids playing Mortal Kombat is the whole reason why the ESRB exists. When the original Mortal Kombat hit the arcades in 1992, it shocked everyone with its insane and over-the-top brutality and bloody violence, which was pretty unheard of at the time for an arcade game. Plus, the game used digitized graphics to make things more realistic which only stirred the controversy pot even more. Plus, it was an arcade game, meaning anyone could just walk up and play it without any kind of identification or age checking, which only stirred the, contro which only stirred the controversy pot even more until parents got so fed up with Mortal Kombat that they demanded the game to be banned and video games be better regulated. While the first demand didn't happen and the Mortal Kombat series is still going strong, their demands for better regulated video games eventually resulted in the creation of the ESRB, so at least they got that. Ironically, despite the game pretty much creating the ESRB, Mortal Kombat arcade machines were never actually removed from arcades, so the original issue that parents had still persisted. And that wraps it up with this video, guys. Let us know what you thought of it in the comment section below. Do us a favor, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to turn your post notifications on. Thank you guys all once again for watching this video, and until next time, this has been Nemo from Training 10, and I'll talk to you guys on the next one.